Hello everyone, welcome to NG Classes YouTube channel for a video lecture series in control systems. In this video lecture, we shall consider a numerical for the mechanical system shown, obtain the equivalent electrical system using force voltage method. So this is how the mechanical system looks like. The force F of T has been applied to the mass M1 and uh, that produces a displacement X1 and there is another displacement called X2. So first I need to identify the number of displacements. For those displacements I will draw those many nodes. The very first task is to, to draw the equivalent mathematical model. So I said there are two displacements. The very first task is I will draw the two displacements uh, the two nodes so this I'm going to call it as node x1 and this I'm going to call it as node x2 so then I need to consider what are the elements that are connected at x1 so if I look closely there is m1 b1 and k3 so these are the three elements which are connected at x1 so let me draw those three elements so first I need to draw m1 so here I'm going to draw the element m1 Yes, uh, let me draw the mass over here with the letter being indicated as M1. So let me extend this further. Yes. So this element I am going to call it as the mass M1. And there is also the friction B1. So that I need to draw at X1. So here I am going to get that. Yes. So here I'm going to draw the dash point or the damper, whatever I call, so that comes over here. So this I'm going to call it as B1. So let me extend this all line also further till this point. Yes. What is the third element? The third element there is, there is another element that is the third element. So that is being called as the spring constant so that I'm going to write it is K3 so let me draw over here the spring constant yes this I'm going to call it as K3 and I'm going to extend this line till this point so towards the end I would join all these three and connect it to ground Yes, just let me join over here and connect these thing to the ground. So these are the elements at node X1 and there is force F of T also being applied at the same point. So let me indicate over here the force F of T being applied to the mass M1 which produces a displacement X1. Yes, so here I'm going to indicate this with the force. So this I'm going to call it as the applied force F of T. So I would connect that also to ground something like this. Let me connect it to ground. So this I'm going to call it as the applied force F of T being applied in this direction. Yes, these are the things which are there at the node X1. So what are the things there at X2? At X2, if I look closely, there is M2, K2 and B3. So I'm going to draw three more elements at the node X2. So here I'm going to draw all those things. So first I said that there must be the mass M2. So here I'm going to indicate that mass. So let me first to draw the mass M2. Yes, this is the mass M2 and let me extend this line till this point. Yes, and what else is there? At X2 there is spring constant. What is that spring constant called as? That is K2. So let me sketch the spring constant K2 at the point X2 and let me also extend this line till the point so that I can connect all those things to the ground yes so here I'm going to call it as the spring constant K2 and what else is there there is 
another uh, dash point at uh, the called as B3. So that is the friction. So here I am going to call it as the dash point, or it is also called as damper. Yes, here I am going to draw that dash point. Yes, the name of this is being B3. And let me also extend this line till this point so that towards the end I can join all these three. So that I am going to draw, draw, do it now. So here, yes, I am done. And let me extend this further. And now I said uh, I am going to connect all these things to the ground. Correct? Yes, I am almost done now. But I need to check what are the elements connected between X1 and X2. Come back over here. Let me come back over here. At X1 and X2, if I look closely, there is K1 and B2. K1 is the spring constant, B2 is the friction. So that I need to draw. How they are connected? They are connected in parallel. So that I need to consider sketching at the point X between X1 and X2. Yes. So here I am going to consider uh, those things. Yes, I will draw first the spring constant K1. So let me consider sketching spring constant K1 over here. Yes, almost done from this. I would join these two things. Yes, and there is another element which is known as the dash point or the friction. So that I am going to consider it over here. Yes, this is how they are connected in parallel. So this I am going to call it as the dash point or the friction. Uh, the spring constant was K1, the name of this was K1 and the name of this is, the dash point is B2. Yes, this is the equivalent mathematical model. Once this is done, I can draw the equilibrium equations and then I can proceed further. So that is the easiest thing I have to do. So the first thing is I need to write the equilibrium equation at node X1. So let me consider writing those things at node X1. So let me write at node x1. So what is there at node x1? There is m1, b1 and k3. So let me consider writing those things. f is equal to f of t has been applied. So that is equal to m1 into d square divided by dt square of x1 plus there is b1. So I'm going to write b1 d divided by dt of x1 plus there is spring constant k3 so that i'm going to consider k3 into x1 correct yes and what are the elements there is another element k1 and b2 which are connected between x1 and x2 so let me consider writing those things so first let me consider the spring constant k1 which is there between x1 and x2. So I would write x1 minus x2. And there is the friction B2. I'm going to write this as D divided by DT of x1 minus x2. So this is the first equilibrium equation at node x1, at node 1. So this is the first equation. So similarly, let me write the another equation and call it as at node x2 so what is there which is 0 equal to because the force has been applied with m1 so at m2 there is nothing so i would write 0 equal to there is m2 k2 and b3 so for those things let me write m2 d square divided by dt square of x2 plus there is k2 so i'm going to write that uh, b3 and k2 first let me consider writing b3 so that these two equations look similar b3 d by dt of x2 plus now i would consider k k2 
so that is written as k2 into x2 plus what else is there again i need to consider k1 and b2 which are between x2 and x1 this time so let me write k1 x2 minus x1 because i am writing this with respect to the node 2 hence it is x2 minus x1 similarly there is a b2 that i'm going to write d divided by dt of x2 minus x1 so this i'm going to call it as the equation number 2 so these are the two equations which i have got the next task is i need to apply the force voltage analogy or the force voltage method i need to write the equivalent electrical equations force voltage method so using this force voltage method i have the standard equations m the mass which is represented as the inductor l friction b its equivalent term is the resistance r then i have the spring constant k which is being represented as 1 divided by c then i have rate of change of displacement dx by dt which is the current i from this equation if i want to get x so i need to integrate that which is integration of i into dt then i have if i want to get d square x divided by dt square which is di divided by dt so this comes from the force voltage method so once i know this i can rearrange the equation 1 and 2 yes therefore using this equation 1 can be rearranged as the equivalent of force is nothing but the voltage then m1 i said it is l1 d square x1 divided by dt square so i'm going to write it as di1 divided by dt correct plus b1 its equivalent term is r1 dx1 divided by dt so i'm going to call it as i1 plus then i have k3 k3 is nothing but 1 divided by c3 x1 is there so that i'm going to call it as integral of i1 dt correct plus there is k1 that i'm going to call it as 1 divided by c1 integral of x1 minus x2 is nothing but i1 minus i2 into dt plus b2 b2 is nothing but r2 and then d by dt of x1 minus x2 which is nothing but i1 minus i2 so this is the equation in electrical term using force voltage method similarly let me consider the second equation so again i need to apply force voltage analogy 0 equal to m2 m2 will get replaced with l2 again i need to write di2 divided by dt plus then there is b3 equivalent term is r3 dx2 divided by dt which is nothing but i2 plus then i have k2 into x2 k2 is nothing but 1 divided by c2 x2 is nothing but integral of i2 dt correct plus and then there is k1 which is nothing but 1 over c1 integral of x2 minus x1 which is i2 minus i1 dt plus then i have b2 b2 is nothing but r2 into bracket d by dt of x2 minus x1 which is nothing but i2 minus i1 so let me write this i2 minus i1 so these are the two equations for these things i need to draw the equivalent electrical network so first the applied voltage v will be there so let me indicate that over here so here i'm going to call i'm going to apply the voltage v of t so let me write let me sketch that over here so this is the applied voltage v of t so here i'm going to call it as the voltage v which is ac in 
nature so this let this be positive this be negative so what is there there is inductor there is resistor and there is capacitor so all these are there in the first loop as there are two equations i'm going to get two loops in the first loop as it is quite evident i have three elements first is l1 so let me indicate l1 so once l1 is done there is the resistance r1 so that i need to sketch the resistor r1 once the resistor has been done there is capacitor c3 so this is the one so let me indicate these terms this is l1 this is r1 and then the capacitor 1 by c3 i need to draw i cannot draw 1 by c3 so let me draw c3 let me sketch c3 and into bracket let me write 1 divided by k3 so this i can do yes extending this further sorry let me just consider a straight line yes so here i'm going to extend this further till this point so this is what i have in the first uh, first uh, loop in the second loop again i have this equation l2 r2 and c2 i have three more elements so first let me consider sketching of the inductor done yes so this i am going to call it as l2 and what else is there there is the resistance r3 so that i need to sketch over here so this i am going to call it as the resistor r3 once that is done there is c2 capacitor 1 by c2 so here i am going to draw that so this i am going to call it as c2 i am going to call this as 1 divided by k2 so let me extend this line further yes these are the two loops and in between i have 1 by c1 and r2 which are there between the loop 1 and loop 2 so that i am going to sketch it over here so here i am going to sketch as i said there is c1 so this is going to be the capacitor c1 and after that there is another element which is in series with that which is nothing but the resistor r2 so that i am going to sketch over here there is the resistor so this is the resistor so let me extend this further so ultimately i just have to join all these lines together and with this i am almost done just let me name these things and let me also join these stuff yes almost done and let me join these two things yes i said this is going to be c1 i would call it as c1 into bracket 1 divided by k1 and what is this resistor that resistor is r2 done in the first loop the current flowing through this is let me call it as i1 in the second loop the current flowing through this is i2 yes th this is the ultimate equivalent electrical network for the given mechanical system so i have considered this numerical step by step and i have expressed i have explained everything in detail if there are still any doubts please let me know them on to the comment section and i'm happy to answer those doubts thank you so much for watching